Good morning. Sorry this is late, but uh, <clears throat> lots of stuff going on here. Uh, this is the Sunday morning worship for January 17th for the Community United Presbyterian Church. Um, we will have our uh, congregational meeting after worship today uh, to go over annual reports. Uh, we'll also install our officers that were our, uh, <clears throat> elected at the congregational meeting uh, before we, we took a break and we're supposed to be done in the beginning of January. <clears throat> My name is Len Morgan. Again, here is my um, contact information. Like I said, Community United Presbyterian Church. That's my cell phone and my email. If you need to get a hold of me uh, or, or wish to make a prayer request, uh, please, uh, please do so. Uh, We continue to pray for those on our prayer list. Uh, um, uh, adding to that, uh, um, let's begin our worship. We have found the Messiah. Jesus Christ, who brings us truth and grace. The one who calls you together this day yearns for each of you and for all people to hear and be blessed. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Blessed is the one who comes bringing trustworthy words for the healing of the world. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Our opening hymn will be Immortal, invisible, wise. Dental's Everyday Smiles event, where new patients get a full Just got to be a little bit quicker there. Let us um, go back and pick up. There we go. Be sure that the one who calls us to hear and obey, already knows the confession of our hearts and is ready to forgive. Let us confess our sins before God and before one another. 
please join me in a prayer of confession. Holy God, you see into each of us and know us fully as creatures in need of your constant care. We confess that we have neither heard your word nor followed your will. We have failed our nation, neighbors, families, friends, and ourselves. Give us ears to hear your wisdom. Lead us to honesty and faith so that we may begin again with renewed strength. In Jesus' name, amen. God knows the hearts of those who seek forgiveness, and by grace you have been saved. In Jesus' name, you are forgiven. Your sins are no more. You have been made clean. And God strengthens you with the freedom through the Holy Spirit in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God. We are forgiven. Anthem for this morning is Here I Am, Lord.
Let us pray. By your Holy Spirit, O God, open our ears and our eyes, our hearts and our minds to the Holy Word so that it comes to rule within us for Jesus' sake. Amen. Our epistle lesson this morning comes from the first book of Corinthians, the seventh, the sixth chapter. Verses 12 through 20. There are only 20 verses till the end of this chapter. Listen for what the Lord has to say to us today. I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything, you say. Food for the stomach and stomach for the food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that it is he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her body? For it is said the two will become one flesh. But whoever is united with the Lord is the one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside of the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Whom have you received from God? You were not your own body. You were bought at a price. And therefore, honor God with your bodies. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the book of John, the first chapter, verses 43 through 51. And it's the story of about, about Nathaniel. Listen for what the Lord has to say. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. And Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathaniel and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite of whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus said, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you out. And Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You see things that are greater than that. And he said, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the son of man. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's part of God's nature to know all things. We call this quality omniscience. God knows everything. There is nothing he does not know. Jesus once said that the Father's knowledge is so total that he even knows when a single bird falls out of the sky. He knows <clears throat> the number of hairs we have on our head. And in the case of some of us, that's easier for him to keep track of. That God knows how much hair we have is just an indication of how intimately he knows each of us. In Hebrews, he read, we read that no creature is hidden to him, but all are open and laid bare to his eyes. Job confessed that God's eyes are upon the ways of a man, 
and he sees all of his steps. God's knowledge of us is so perfect, Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, and he knows our needs even before we ask. God knows all things. And today's gospel lesson informs us that Jesus knows all things also. He knew all about Nathaniel, even though they had never met. But as Nathaniel walked toward the Lord for the first time, Jesus could already say about him that he was an Israelite in whom there was no God. Nathaniel looked back at Jesus and asked, how do you know me? When Nathaniel first heard about Jesus from Philip, he was impressed. He asked, how can anything good come of Nazareth? Nazareth was a little town in Judea. And Nathaniel figured that what you get out of a little town is little people. But when he met the Lord face to face and saw how well Jesus already knew him, he confessed, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Our gospel lesson manifests Jesus Christ to us as truly God. Because Jesus knows all things, just as God does. Just as it is a part of God's nature to know everything, so it's a part of our Lord's nature. Jesus knows everything, for Jesus is God. Jesus does know everything. One day, Jesus was in Samaria, and he was thirsty. So he sat down by a well and waited to get a drink. He didn't have anything with which to draw water, so he had to wait for somebody who could help him. Presently, a woman of the area came to the well, and she was the real reason Jesus was there. They began to speak. Jesus asked her some questions about her personal life. The questions he asked in such a way that she could tell he already knew the answers. Because of his intimate knowledge of her, she believed in him and confessed to her and her neighbors. She told them, he told me all that I ever did. The Pharisees were regularly frustrated in their confrontations with Jesus because they always, he always knew what they were thinking. Jesus knew their thoughts, Matthew tells us. He perceived their wickedness. Jesus knows all people and needed no one to tell him about a man, for he himself knew what was in that man. He even knew when, that one of his disciples would betray him from the moment he was chosen to be a disciple. All the disciples in the last few hours before Lord's death confessed, now we know that you know all things. And by this we believe that you came from God. Jesus knows everything and he is God. But more importantly, Jesus knows us. He says so in John, the 10th chapter, verse 14, when he says, I know my own and my own know me. The fact that Jesus knows everything about us can either be good news or bad news. We can decide which it is. It is good news if we look at his omniscience and believe in him because he knows everything about us that he takes care of us. It can be bad news when we try to hide from him. Adam and Eve decided it was bad news after they sinned. They decided to be afraid of God and to run away from him. They tried to hide from him because of what they had done. It would have worked except for the fact that our all-knowing God knew where they were. Like Adam and Eve, many people choose to pretend that God does not know everything. They try to hide things from him. The Pharisees of the Lord's day believed they could hide their wickedness from God and the fact that they hated Jesus. But he showed them over and over again that there was no place to hide. Like the Pharisees, people who try to hide from God today invariably wind up hating him because he always finds them. Our leaders today deny God under the premise that it offends some people. They remove God from schools. They remove him from the government. And we wonder why things are all going to 
I'll let you finish that. You think God doesn't know? God was with the Israelites all through Egypt, and he is here with us today. And better than trying to hide from our all-knowing God and Savior is that we expose ourselves to him and confess what he already knows about us anyway. To confess in its most basic sense means to expose oneself. The tax collector told Jesus about one of the parables, knew that God knew all about his sin, and it was senseless to hide. So he confessed, oh God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus accepted him, just as he accepts us today. The good news about our Lord Jesus Christ is not only does he know all things, but even though he knows it, he accepts us and he loves us just the way we are. In spite of all of our imperfections, he loves us because we are his. Jesus knew all the dirty details about the woman caught in adultery one day. She couldn't hide anything from the people and was dragged out in front of him for punishment. But he forgave her. Jesus knew all about the public sins of that woman. She had washed his feet with her tears. She didn't try to hide or forgive. And he forgave her. He knew all about the weaknesses of Peter and James and John. And yes, even Judas. Still, he calls them to be his disciples. He calls us to be disciples. Jesus knows everything. There's no hiding from him. When we expose ourselves to him and confess our sins, there's no longer any need to hide. And he takes our sins away and he forgives us. And he accepts us and he loves us. And knowing that he knows everything about us, there is no threat to us. Best of all, Jesus knows the way to heaven. He told Nathaniel, you will see the heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Jesus knows the way to heaven because he is the way. He has told us, I am the way, and no one comes to the Father but through me in John. All who believe in Jesus, our all-knowing Savior, will have eternal life. There used to be a radio drama many years ago, and it began with these words. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. The shadow was a mysterical, magical agent of discovery. Somehow he always managed to know who the bad guys were and how to get them caught. The shadow was imaginary, but God and Jesus are real. And Jesus as God knows everything because he's a true God. Jesus knows everything. He knows everything about us. And in spite of all that, he loves us still. In Jesus precious name we pray. Amen. Let us affirm our faith by praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father. Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
We have to go back and Okay, come that time we share our joys and concerns. Please continue to pray for those on our prayer list. Please continue for those struggling with COVID. Please continue to pray for those searching for the vaccine, getting on the list the struggles that they're going through. I'd like to mention that Arlene Bortz needs to be in our prayers. Uh, the doctors discovered cancer on, on Thursday. Uh, so continue to pray for us as she meets with the young oncologist and discovers uh, what her potential treatment would be. And uh, Joe Starry, who was to have surgery last week, uh, had a seizure and is currently in AGH hospital. Uh, please lift them up in prayer. Uh, continue to pray for those who mourn, who have lost loved ones, whether through accident or, or tragedy or, or through the, the COVID virus. Uh, we continue to hear about that as, as the numbers uh, don't look like there's any, any release. But let us gather, gather in prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all the earth, the church, and all those in need, saying, God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for the world, for leader of nations, this, that wisdom and integrity will prevail for the good of all people, especially the poor, for regions torn by conflict, that peace may reign, and living become an enterprise of construction rather than destruction. We pray for all people of faith, for the unity of the body of Christ, that divisions might not turn away people away from the church. That wherever prayers are raised up, the one God of all will hear them for all people who nurture life in the name of the greater good. We pray for our own nature and the president and the, the Congress and the Supreme Court and all judges, our state governments and local governments, our councils and school boards. This is a difficult time for them. We pray for the peaceful transition of power. There's been a lot on the media that uh, uh, stirring up a lot of anxiety. We pray that you put your hand over it and that peace will prevail. That all who have power will have consideration to make the most healthy and choices for people and creatures. We pray for those in need. For all who are hungry in our nation, in our world, for those struggling with unemployment, for those uh, struggling to get stimulus money, for those with no home and no employment, for those who may or are in prison, be with them. For parents and children who live in fear for any reason, we also lift up those who continue to mourn. And now with the comes of the, the children of God, let us pray the prayer that he's taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus promised you that I will come to see heaven opened and angels dancing in splendor. Our offerings are a thanksgiving for these gifts. 
open your hearts and share your possessions so that the church works can be made strong for the sake of this needy world. We also celebrate today, we had the installation of uh, the uh, elders that were elected at the congregational meeting and uh, the deacons. Uh, we'd like to welcome Amy uh, Watt, who's an elder, and Georgia Sowers, and uh, Nick Lachesney, who's returning. He's still on the board, so he was installed. <clears throat> Lou Noss is a deacon, and, and Barb Carney. Uh, we ask you to pray for them as, as your leaders, and hopefully when they will guide this church in their ministry. Let us pray. We give you thanks, God of all creation, for the power of your living word. Making the winds blow and the waters flow, receive these gifts from our hands and use them to bring peace and blessing to all your children in Jesus' name. Our closing hymn will be Shine, Jesus, Shine.
Let us pray. After worship this morning, there will be a annual congregational meeting. Uh, those reports will be available. Uh, all things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. Listen to the word of our Lord as you move through your days. Trust the Holy Spirit will guide your choices. See in each person you meet one for whom Jesus gave his life. The peace of Christ, crucified and risen for all, go with you this day and always. And the people of God say, Amen. Have a good week.